Hi everyone. Don't be fooled by these parts. They're not what they seem. In this video, I'll show you exactly what these parts are, how to identify them, and how to test them. Welcome to a brand new tech tip series here at Mr. Carlson's lab, where I'll teach you things about electronics the others don't teach. If you'd like to stay current in this series, definitely subscribe and hang around. I'll have many more Tech Tips videos coming in the very near future as well. So let's take a look at these parts and see what they are. The first component we'll look at is this one right here, or in the main picture, this one right here. At first glance, when we look at this small device here, we can see that it has a small glass body and in that glass body, we can see two coppery like looking ends, which to many of us would immediately lead us to a form of an assumption already, right? So it really does look like a, a small signal diode of some sort, say a 1N4152 or a, say a 1N914 or something like that, right? Many Zener diodes also hide in a package like this as well. But there are two clues that tell us that this could be something different right away. So first of all, we look at the gap between those two little copper like looking ends inside the body there. All right. So many times this is known as Kovar. All right. So that's the, the glass to metal seal inside here. But you can see that little gap right in the center there. That's very close together. The fact that that gap is so close together almost right away eliminates the, the fact that this could be some form of a diode. Now, again, manufacturing tolerances and things like this, you know, it could have been a faulty component right from the beginning. And here's another thing to keep in mind. If you find something like this on a circuit board and it's in an industrial machine, and say there's coolant in that machine and it's been leaking, or say, you know, the machine is older and it has some electrolytic caps around this. If there's a coolant leak across this device, or if any of those caps leak electrolyte, a lot of the times it'll wash the markings right off of a small little glass device like this. So that's also something to keep in mind. So at this point, of course, unless the circuit surrounding this is completely understood, you know, the verdict is really out about this little device, what it really is at this point. And this is why I'm going to show you how to verify something like this. So the first thing that we want to do is check it with a diode checker at first. All right. So I'll move this in here and uh, I'll bump this down just a touch. It is pretty bright. So to show you that, you know, the leads are hooked up here, I'll clip these together, right? See that? Now I'll grab this device and I'll attach this. So just say, you know, we're testing this as a diode right now, right? So just say we wanted to test this just like so. Okay. See, we have an open connection. All right. So we're thinking in our head, okay, so maybe that line is washed off and it's the other way, right? And it's still a good device. So we'll move this over to here and hook it up the other way and see what happens right here. And as you can see, there's still, it's not identified as a diode or anything like that. So say this was a diode, it could be, you know, an open component at this point, right? So before we, you know, come to any conclusions or anything like that, what we want to do is move this over to ohms. And immediately we can see we're very close to 100 K ohms, and this is at room temperature. So that's our first hint right there. Okay. 100 K ohms at room temperature. Keep that in mind. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger on this device and watch what happens to the resistance reading. I'll remove my finger. See how it's moving back up. So again, we're very close. To 100 K ohms when it settles off at room temp. So what does that tell us? Well, this is a thermistor and what's happening is the temperature from my fingers is affecting the resistance reading. That's what a thermistor does, right? They're used as temperature sensors. The fact that it settles off very close to 100 K ohms tells us that this would be most likely 100 K ohms. And because when I heat it, the resistance is dropping, that would be a 100 K ohm NTC thermistor. So negative temperature coefficient. 
The second component that we're going to look at, which is this one right here, looks very much like the first component that we looked at, but this one here is even more tricky. So if we take a close look at this little part right here, it looks again, very much like a small glass diode. Again, we see a little glass body with little seals on the ends, but there's a few things that tell us something very different about this component. And this is a very different type of component. You won't come across this all that incredibly often, but when you do, now you'll know. Again, components like this are used in harsh environments. So this one here is designed to be sealed from the environment. So if we look at this and we get rather close to it, if you look, if you look right in the center of it, you see a little brown area in the center and you can almost see the two little caps. You see that little brown center in there with the two little caps. And if we look, we see 102. So that is our first hint to what this is. So just say we wanted to test this as resistance. It's pretty much the same scale it was on there before. You say we thought this was a resistor or something like that, right? So I'll clip this on here. And as you can see, look at that, nothing there. But did you see how it moved when I first attached it up? Did you see how it almost looked like it was going to read something, but it didn't. So what I'll do is I'll turn this around. All right, and I'll put this on here again, and I'll do that. Oh, did you see how that wanted to look like it wanted to read something there? Well, that's our first clue. So if we go over to say diode and we look at this as a diode, we see nothing there. Again, can move this around like so, right? But now let's go over to capacitance. It said 102. So this is a 0 0.001 microfarad capacitor sealed in a glass case. How often do you see that? Well, if you work on industrial machines, you'll see this more often than not. So this is sealed in a little glass body like this in order to keep things again, like coolant and all sorts of things away from this, especially if this is in some form of a device where timing or say it, uh, it needs to be shielded in a rougher environment, right? So there you have it. That, 102, again, is your clue, right? It's 0 0.001 microfarad capacitor. Again, pretty dark, but you can actually see the surface mount capacitor element inside it if you look very closely. And if you're used to looking at surface mount components, now you might recognize it. See the little surface mount cap pinched between those two little caps in there? The third component that we're going to look at today and figure out through testing is this one right here. Now, when we take a closer look at the device itself, it looks like a capacitor. It has two leads, one on either side here. The lead runs up and it bends over towards the center of the device. It's about the size of a small capacitor. So say we were to compare it to an actual capacitor, you can see that, you know, it is very close and it is very small. This has a color code on it. So if we get this one out of the way, this has a color code on it that is orange, green, and black. So orange is three, green is five, and black is zero. So immediately we know that that's 35, so 35 something. So we're looking at its size. It could be 35 picofarad. If you are interested in older equipment, you'll most likely know of a capacitor known as the tropical fish style capacitor. And this very much resembles something that could be like a tropical fish style capacitor. I'll attach this to capacitance here. So again, still on capacitance from before. Put this on here. Look at this, it's already in microfarad. There's no way that this is going to be you know, a capacitance like that, that's pretty high, right? And of course, now look at it, right? So either this is a shorted cap, right? Because that's what this is indicating right now, or it's a different component. So we still have a clue, right? We know that, you know, 350, so 35, right? So let's go over to resistance and look at that. We're at 33 ohms, pretty close to 35, right? And if I was to put this down and probably not handle it at room temperature, it would be 35 or slightly around that. What do we have? Well, we have another thermistor that looks like a disk capacitor. 
or a tropical fish style capacitor, right? So now, if I heat this up, look at that. Move the heat and it will start to crawl back up again. So again, like the first thermistor, if I'm heating it up and the resistance is going down, what type of a thermistor is this? It's a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. So we have a 35 ohm NTC thermistor. The last two mystery parts to figure out today are these two right here. When we first look at the parts, they look like transistors with one lead missing. And here's a look at another side of one of these parts here with one lead missing. You're probably thinking, well, I can see a part number. Why don't we just look up that part? This is known as a house part number. And many, many times this number won't lead anywhere. Again, this part would have been designed for maybe a certain run and then they put a certain number on the part and it really doesn't lead anywhere. The company that maybe would have bought these, you know, way, 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 way back when might have a cross reference to this. But uh, a lot of the times when you see a, a part number like that, it just really won't go anywhere. So you're still kind of in the dark. Even this one is very, very hard to find. If you look deep enough, you'll actually find this, but this is rather tough to locate this one right here. If you know what the component is and you type in the part number, of course, that would get quite a bit easier, but still, even at that, it is pretty tough to find. So since this little device here already looks like a semiconductor, like a transistor, that really is our first hint. So I talk about in my earlier videos in this channel, how to test transistors with a standard DMM, digital multimeter in the diode test position. And you can look that video up in my, on my videos list here on YouTube. You'll find that uh, testing from the base to emitter and the base to collector will indicate as two diodes. You can test transistors that way and get a, a very good idea whether your transistor is okay or not. Now, with this device right here, since it looks like a transistor, it really is our first hint already, right? But how could it be a transistor, you know, missing a, one lead off of it? So what I'll do here is I will turn on this little device right here. And the reason I'm using this is just because it's easier to hold the device and just pinch the leads over here. So what I'll do is you can keep an eye on this little area right here. You can see it tests as a diode. And as you can see on the display right there, the line side is facing up. If I turn the device around and retest it, the line side should be facing down. And there it is. So already we know that this is testing like a diode. So we know that it is testing like a diode. And it already does look like a semiconductor device with only two leads. What does that tell us about this device? This is known as a varactor diode. So this is a diode that's pretending it's a capacitor. So they're used in many different circuits and I explain a little bit more about varactor diodes in the earlier videos in this tech tip series. You can look up the LED capacitor video and you can see how an LED can also try to be a capacitor as well. These are known as varactor diodes or tuning diodes and they're used in circuits when instead of actually having a variable capacitor, you want to use the diode itself inside as a capacitor. So basically varying the voltage in reverse to this device will make it perform very much like a variable capacitor. If you're enjoying these videos, definitely subscribe and stay tuned. I'll have many more videos coming in the very near future involving both modern and antique electronic devices alike. So whether you're into semiconductor technology or vacuum tube technology, I'll teach you things about those technologies that other channels just don't talk about. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to a much higher level, gaining access to another 225 plus videos at this point, the list is always growing, and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions, creations, and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my electronics course on Patreon.
There are many projects there for you to build and learn from, both modern and antique technology alike. Again, whether you're interested in building things on circuit boards and with semiconductors, or whether you're interested in building point-to-point -point projects with vacuum tubes, it's all there for you to learn from. Again, at this point, 225 plus videos that are not here, they're only there. There's many, many files associated with those videos that you can download and of course learn from those files as well. Definitely check out my Patreon electronics course. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on that link, it'll take you right there and you can check it out. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.